Hello everyone. Welcome to Controllers Tech. Today in this video, we will see how can we send and receive data from the computer, without using UART. I will use the USB to do so. I have already made a video on it, but that video only covers the sending part, and this video will cover both the sending, and the receiving parts. Let's start by creating the project in Cube IDE first. I am using STM32F103C8 controller for this video. Give some name to the project and click finish. Here is our Cube MX. I am selecting the external crystal for the clock first. Select serial wire here. Now in the USB select the device. In the USB device settings, select the class as communication device class. Leave everything to default here. I will just change this name to see if it shows up on the computer. That's all here, now go to clock setup. I will set the clock manually. I have 8 MHz crystal and I want the system to run at maximum frequency. Note here that USB clock is automatically set to 48 MHz. That's all for the setup. Click save to generate the project. The functions used to send or receive data can be found in USBD, CDC, if.c file. But if you look into the header file, there is only a function available globally, and that is to transmit data. We will modify the receive function in a while. Here is the limit for the send and receive buffer, you can change them, if the data is quite big. Let's try to send some data to the computer first. This is the data I am going to send. We also need to include USBD, CDC, if.h, as the function is available in that file. Include string.h also. Now in the while loop, we will transmit the data. The first parameter is the buffer to send. And second is the length of the data. Let's add some delay here. Build it and flash to the board. It flashed successfully. Now before connecting the controller, I am going to open the devices. And now as I connect it, a new serial device gets detected. It's not showing the name that I entered in the Cube MX. That might be due to drivers in Windows 10, it might show for you though. Anyway the device is connected to COM5, and I will open a serial port there. You can choose any board rate, it works for everything pretty much. You can see the data is being received by the computer every one second. So the transmit function is working properly. Now let's see how to receive data from the computer. As I mentioned, the function to receive data is not available globally. So here I am defining an array of 64 bytes, to store the data into. Now I am going to give a reference of this variable in the cdc, if.c file, 
so that we can use it here. In the CDC receive function, I am going to use memcopy, to copy the data from the incoming buffer, to our buffer. Here the arguments are, the buffer to copy into, the buffer to copy from and the size of the data. Memcopy takes size t as the parameter, so we need to do the conversion here. We are ready to receive the data now. Let's build it. I should use the debugger here, since I want to see the buffer. I have added the buffer in the live expression. Let's run it now. As you can see the transmission is working alright, and the controller is transmitting every second. When I send some data to the controller, it gets saved in the buffer. I will try transmitting something else. You can see the new data. But there is a small issue here, and I will show that. The data is again received successfully, but now if I send this smaller data again, you see the buffer still have the data from the previous transmission. To handle this situation, I am going to clear the buffer before receiving any new data. Mem set can be used for it. Also make sure you clear buff 2, I have noticed that it also keeps the old data stored in it. Let's run the code again. I will add the buffer again. This time you can see, the buffer only contains the data we are sending. You can later parse this buffer according to your requirement, since it can be accessed from the main file itself, there shouldn't be any problem with that. This video can be useful if you are using Blue Pill, or any discovery board. It can save you the hectic of connecting the TTL device for transferring data using UART. This is it for this video. I hope you understood the process. You can download the code from the link in the description. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.